Hey y'all and welcome back. I'm so happy to have you here. So we're going to be picking up reading from our devotional, Turning Points with God by David Jeremiah. It's 365 daily devotionals. Today's devotion is coming from page 120. The title is, He Came for All. He sure did. I mean, that right there. Period. <laughs> right? Um, our scripture comes from Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13. And I will be reading this from my King James Bible. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were, a, were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Mm. The parable of the Good Samaritan helping the injured Jew is widely accepted as an illustration of how we are to treat others who are in need. Luke 10 verses 25 through 37. There is another side to it, however, a side that becomes clear when you learn that Jews and Samaritans were taught to despise each other and that Jesus was telling this parable to a Jewish audience. Hearing their teacher tell them to go and do likewise, regardless of cultural differences, was overwhelming for them. In effect, Jesus was trying to open the eyes of their hearts so they could see all human beings as he saw them in need of a savior. Throughout history, the good news of the gospel has, has broken down the walls of separation between races and religions because of the one thing we all have in common, the need for salvation. The Bible tells us there is no difference for all have sinned and fall short of, of the glory of God, Romans 3 verses 22 through 23. Everyone, regardless of race, religion, or creed, shares the same title of sinner. Because of Christ's sacrifice on the cross, everyone who believes in him can share the same glorious title of forgiven. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. That is straight from the Declaration of Independence. Wow. Wow. So much. I think this is so, so, so fitting, especially for the time we live in. It seems like every way you turn, the news, social media, everything is trying to cause a divide. A divide. They're trying to bring us all against one another. It's almost as in, as if you could take out Jews and Samaritans and just put human beings. Because every way you turn, they're trying to make us all divided, all feel, you know, this this party's this way, this group is this way, this, you know, and they're trying to separate us. And it's totally going against what Jesus did on the cross. And I know we're past Easter, but you know what? It is relevant every day of our life, what he did on that cross. Because without him dying on that cross, for our sins, we would stand no chance, none, of making it to heaven. It took the, the sinless lamb of God to come and die on the cross for us. To be even stand a chance for the possibility that we can make it. And we have no one to blame but ourselves if we do not make it to heaven. And the, your family can't preach you to heaven. Your family, when you pass on, can't pray you to heaven. It is on you and how you choose to live your life. Do you choose to live a godly, holy life? Or do you choose to straddle the fence? Or do you choose to just walk away from it completely? It's all on you because he paid the price. Now, what are you going to do with it? You know what I mean? And I'm saying that to myself too. Not just, I'm not, I'm saying you, but I don't mean like you that's actually, I'm not pointing fingers. I'm talking to myself, y'all. I'm talking to myself. So please understand that. But he died for all mankind. And y'all, we all bleed red. We all bleed the same. We all have feelings and emotions. And I, I wish, I wish so badly that we could all just come together and love one another. I can love you even if I don't agree with you. I can love you even if I don't approve and this is, and I use the term very loosely, of your lifestyle. Because at the end of the day, 
when it all comes down to it, I can't save you and I can't send you to hell, nor can you save me or send me to hell. I am not your judge. There is only one that can judge. Um, but I can love you and I can show you the love of God. Even if I feel like your lifestyle is not what I think it should be and it doesn't line up with scripture, I can still show you the love of God. That's what he did. Jesus walked among the, among the sinners not condemning, and he had the right to, not judging, and he had the right to, but showing them the love of the Father. That is my ultimate goal in life, is to just love you, just love you. I don't want to preach to you. I don't want to harp on you. I don't want to just beat you down and make you feel awful, because I have not made it. That's what we need to understand. You got some of these people that want to just stand in judgment and tell you everything you're doing wrong, show you that they don't approve of this, 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 and this. But I'm sorry, who are you? Have you made it to heaven yet? Who are you to judge? You have no right to judge me. And that's where I really, really, really... That's where I, God has to just come and put his hand over my mouth when I start seeing people casting judgment. And it's honestly because I've lived under it all of my life. I've lived under that judgment, that condemnation, that ridicule. And I made a conscious, I make a conscious effort to try not to be that because I know how it feels. And you know what? It didn't work. It don't work. That does not work. When you are trying to win someone over to the Lord, the last thing you need to do is to be condemning, judgmental, all of that. You just need to show them the love of God. Let him give you the words. Let him open that door. Let him give you that avenue to go down. Just show them the love because I promise you, the world out there will accept them any way they choose to come. Will not condemn them, will not judge them, but make them feel loved and welcomed to where that's what they want. I've been in some churches that when you walk in, you automatically see people looking down your nose, down their nose at you because you don't look like them. You don't dress like them. You don't walk like them. You don't talk like them. You don't worship like them. And you know what? It makes me not want to be a part of them. You know what I mean? But I've also walked in churches that have loved me just as I am that have welcomed me with open arms, just as I am. They have not tried to change me, convert me, anything like that. But they have just welcomed me into their place, loved me, made me feel a part of them, and that's where I love to be. The same with the world, y'all. The same with the world. The world will welcome you with open arms, love you just as you are, and make you want to be a part of that because you feel so welcomed and so included. And that's how we need to be as the children of God because none of us have made it. None of us. He says it right here. Everyone, regardless of race, religion, or creed, shares the same title of sinner. We have all sinned. And I... It's a hot subject for me because I've had grew up with people judging me. And it's like, don't judge me just because you sin differently than I do. Amen. <laughs> you know, don't look down your nose at me because you sitting in judgment of me is just as bad as the sin that you think I'm doing. But they don't, they, it's blurred lines for them. They don't want to see that. And, that's where I have a real problem with it. I don't know if you've picked up on that or not, <laughs> but I have a real problem. And the Lord has really had to help me in that area. And even to this day, I still have people in my own family that I just had to put boundaries up and have no contact with because it is not healthy for me in my walk with the Lord because it brings up all these feelings because they sit in their high seat in condemnation and judgment, and I cannot be a part of that because, number one, I don't want to associate myself with that. So, I put up a boundary, and I have a boundary. I love them, but I do not want to be in that circle with them because it is not healthy for me in my walk with God. And it is okay to have a boundary if you go about it the right way. Um, I think boundaries are very beneficial 
and very healthy for us. We have to have boundaries in our lives. It's how we go about creating those boundaries that can make it not the best, you know. So take care of yourself and your walk with God because at the end of the day, you are only accountable for yourself. So you got to make sure yourself, I've got to make sure I am where I need to be. And if that means I have to put up a boundary and love from afar, then that's what I'm going to do to protect myself because I know that's what I have to do. I hope that makes sense. But all of us are sinners. All of us. We all sin. No perfect person is walking this earth. There was one that walked the earth and he died. They crucified him. But we all sin. We are to ask for forgiveness. We, 70 times 7, we are to forgive others. And I think that includes ourselves. We have to forgive ourselves and ask God to forgive us. Because we all, I know I do. I'm not perfect. Maybe y'all, y'all do it differently and y'all got it figured out and you don't sin. But I mean, I have to every day die out to the Lord. Every day I'm asking God to forgive me. Sometimes all through the day because I'm so imperfect, you know, but I try. And that's the main thing. We can't let the devil beat us up over all that either. We do our best. We live the best we can. We plead the blood of Jesus over our lives and our family. And we get up every day and we try to be better than we were the day before. And we lay our heads down at night and we ask God, Lord, if I unknowingly did something that would keep me out of heaven, if you were to make your return tonight, please, Lord, forgive me and help me to be better if you allow me to wake up in the morning. And that's all we can do, y'all. That's all we can do. But none of us are perfect. We're all sinners. Um, and I, I truly pray for there to be a coming back together. And I, I, I pray against this division that's happening all over our country. I, it hurts my heart. And you can love the person and hate the sin. But at the end of the day, we're all human beings just doing what we think is right. And I have no doubt if all these people that were just going at each other, if they ever just sit down one-on-one, -on -one, had a civil conversation, they would understand. They probably all want the same thing. They're just going about it in a different way. And that's, that's the sad reality, but they don't want us to see that. They want to throw that divide. They want to throw that discrimination. They want to throw all those ugly words into it. And it's really sad. Our country is in a sad, a sad state of affairs that we need to pray for. All over the world, we need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. The devil is rampant. You don't even have to turn on the news to know that. You can literally just walk, go right down the road, go into a store. You know, there's always something that's just... I, I go into stores and I hear how the... The customers are talking to the cashiers or the or the uh, the customers talking to the waiter or waitress. It's just sad. It's sad. And I used to be that way. Honest to God, I used to be that. I used to be that person, but it took the Lord getting a hold of me. And it's going to take the Lord getting a hold of them. But that's not our job, job to judge and condemn them. We need to pray for them. When we see that happening, we need to pray. We need to pray. And we thank God that, number one, he, he brought us out of that. And that's not, that's what I do. When I see that happen, I just, first of all, I see how ridiculous I looked and sounded. And then I thank God I'm not that person anymore. We don't know what's going on in their lives, but God does, and he can help them. We need to look at others with a heart of compassion because we don't know what causes people to react we don't know what might be behind in the background. We don't know what they're going through. We don't know their story. God does. But we can pray for them. We can definitely pray for them. And that's what I want to do. And I know just from talking to y'all in the comments, y'all feel the same way. Y'all feel that same love of God. So let's let our light for Jesus shine in our lives. Let's just walk the walk. Let our yays be yays and our nays be nays. And just... Let God use us when and how he sees fit. That's what I want to do. I love y'all. I pray you have an amazing day. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.